Good morning. It's such an exciting morning for us. Uh, my name is Sridhar Ramaswamy. I run the ads and commerce team here at, uh, um, at Google. Music occupies a really special place in all our hearts. We all remember our lives by our favorite melodies and the times when we had them. Uh, the time when Roja first came out, one of Air Rahman's greatest compositions. Um, you know, I distinctly remember as a time that you know, my life with, uh, with my fiance, my wife then, was forming. And so music really touches all of us um, in ways that are incredibly personal and incredibly special. And uh, the people that create this music literally can move entire countries and generations. And A.R. Rahman is one of the world's most renowned musicians. And uh, when I heard that he was uh, visiting the area, the first thing, of course, I did was buy tickets uh, for me and my wife to see his concert this evening. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited about that. And then when I was given the opportunity to actually have him here, have him be in front of all of you, I jumped at that opportunity. And uh, you know, it's going to be quite, quite an amazing time. Um, Air Rahman is, of course, it, as I said, he's one of uh, the world's most famous, most renowned musician, known for his very, very unique style of blending different kinds of Indian music, Indian instruments, performers, working with um, people across, across the world. His uh, accomplishments are uh, also stunning. He, uh, of course, has won uh, two Academy Awards, two uh, Grammy Awards, um, and uh, in addition, he's won four you know, National Music Awards in India, 15 Filmfare Music Awards, and 13 uh, Filmfare South India Music Awards. Uh, and while he's an amazing musician, he's also a deep humanist that has contributed heavily to the cause of impoverished uh, women and children. And he's also started uh, the KM Conservatory, this was in 2008, to help aspiring musicians reach their true potential. And uh, it's my incredible privilege, honor, and pleasure to have Aon on stage with us today. Please give him a big round of applause. Okay. Welcome to Google. We are so delighted um, to have you here. We have about 500 Googlers here, and we also have uh, a live stream uh, on, on YouTube that uh, Tons of people are watching. We'll get you the stats on how many people are watching. I know my mom is watching from, uh, from Austin. <laughs> um, and uh, I thought you know, I would uh, kick this uh, off with uh, a few questions. Uh, but before that, I was told by your team that you actually wanted to be, believe it or not, a computer engineer <laughs> when you was growing up. <laughs> well, I am um, happy to say that uh, Google's loss uh, is the world's gain. So we're very happy you decided not to be a computer engineer. But in case you change your mind, um, we decided we would keep a spot reserved for you <laughs> and uh, that you could have this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm very, very pleased to be here. And nice to see all of you. I don't get up in the morning normally, but I had to do specially. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this is someone that will make all of our engineers proud. I asked him, uh, uh, you know, uh, where did you come from? He said he flew over from LA this morning. Um, and I said, OK, so you must have gotten up early. When did you go to sleep? He said, oh, you know, normally I sleep by 4.30. <laughs> and so it's really early for him, and uh, it's quite a treat for us. Um, you know, you have uh, an incredible musical style that blends traditional, modern, religious, and uses so many different uh, you know, instruments. Where do you draw the inspiration um, for this kind of music, and how do you bring it all together? I grew up listening to various kind of music, and nobody told me what to listen to. <laughs> so when I started um, composing, it was a part of my palette. It was not intentional, oh, I'm going to do a beat here, I'm going to do a dolok here. Or 
it came naturally and it felt right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and when you're thinking about composing, how does this music uh, come to you? Is it uh, something that you sit quietly to imagine or do you think about a situation and the melody flows into your head? What, 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 what is that like? I um, come from various kind of sensibilities because I was playing with the South Indian composers before and I knew how the tunes would be, kind of. <laughs> then I did commercials. So in commercials, it's always like, how do you catch the listener yep. in, in five seconds, 10 seconds? How do you make, make a tune memorable? Constant brief is like, today, you, know, you look at them and it's as though they're going to say something new, and they're the same thing. <laughs> it should be catchy, it should be <laughs> memorable. I said, OK, I know yeah. that. For three years, and I got sick of it. And then when movies came in, uh, when I started scoring movies, it, um, all these things were in my head. So I used parts of um, different ideas from different experiences. But then later now, after 20 years, I feel like I should move on. Yeah. And uh, since I have a classical conservatory back in, in Chennai, to write more pieces with more depth in it so people can play on piano and write stuff. There's still time for that, I guess. <laughs> uh, speaking of movies, you know, you composed uh, amazing scores, but uh, the, the whole process uh, just seems so very daunting of composing a score for an entire music that is two hours long. Um, you know, for us non-musicians in, uh, you know, here, how do you even begin to think about you know, a process like that? Do you work closely with the director and producer to get a feel for what the story is? How does this all like, come together from, from beginning to end? It seems like such a mammoth undertaking. It's uh, simple yet complicated. Um, first of all, you go into what um, the movie needs. Yep. And sometimes you have to go with it, sometimes you go against it. Because if that kind of movie has come before, yeah. then you try a different treatment, and that treatment makes the whole movie newer. So the various attributes, we sit and brainstorm, and, and um, we get, a, get to a decision where, okay, let's treat this movie like this. Like in Mani Ratnam's OK Kan Mani, um, he was doing a romantic thing, and I said, the sound of today has changed. It's become very EDM, but um, we, need to have our, our style, you know, our footprint on it. So it took a while, probably two, three months, to get a hybrid EDM-ish tone, but still having traditional stuff in it. And people liked it, I guess, so. And, uh, you know, of course, in India, uh, language is another huge dimension. So you've composed music now for, uh, you know, films and, like, a, a dozen languages, and sometimes you know the same movie gets released, of course, in many, many, many different languages. So, how do you think about the interaction between music and the the lyrics that you put into the you know in, in, into the melody? How many languages do you speak, by the way? I don't speak any language properly. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> a little bit of English, a little bit of Tamil, uh, a little bit of Telugu, um, Hindi. I can sing, but I can't speak. <laughs> and I can read a bit of Arabic. So those are the things. I and tried to learn Mandarin, but I got carried away. <laughs> and so when you are, uh, uh, you know, when, when you're, oh, when you question who, about, yeah, about the oh, lyrics, sorry, who writes many, yeah, yeah, yeah. So last year I had um, I done Hindi, Tamil. Persian and Portuguese, <laughs> um, which is Pele. Uh, that movie is coming next year. Yeah, yeah. Based on Pele, the soccer player. And then uh, Majid Majidi's movie was a Persian movie. And then um, Mani Ratnam movie was a Tamil movie. And Imtiaz Ali's movie is a Hindi movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
do you have uh, then people translate some of the uh, lyrics uh, that, that you write into these other languages? You hear them? How much do you I think the lyric that? writer does the job, and the director works very close with the lyric writer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what the song has to say is one of my decisions, too, like the title right. of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the notion of it. and So that I work very closely, and the rest of the stuff they fill up, and which is beautifully. And so half the, it, it's a, uh, when you're working in a movie, it's beautiful because if you have competent people working to, we kind of um, have a healthy competition and all of us come uh, to create one product, which yeah. is beautiful. Sometimes it works. <laughs> That's, that's all. Well, I think it's worked more than sometimes, <laughs> as we all can uh, as we all can attest. So um, I heard, by the way, that uh, you were at the White House recently. Yeah, there was a screening of uh, Jai Ho. Um, that's amazing. Did you uh, did you get to meet President Obama? What was that experience like? No, I met him last time for the Indian State Dinner. <laughs> he was a big fan of Slumdog Millionaire music, and you know both of them were very kind. They sent me Christmas cards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, he hasn't sent me any. <laughs> um, how do you keep your energy up? You know, there's a, you said you did a concert yesterday in LA. Uh, there's a concert this um, evening in San Jose. You're, uh, you're traveling in between. Um, how do you just keep your I energy up? No, actually, all of when, I, when I started and people saw all the listings, they were like, what are you going to do? Are you going to come back alive? <laughs> <laughs> So, but, um, so when you're performing, it's a whole new energy, and different places have different energy. People make you rejuvenate it. The kind of love they've been given is You amazing. get your energy from the crowd. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So far, so good. We just have three I'm, more to go. <laughs> how many more to go? Three more out three. of the 18. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, so you're at the very end of yeah, it. That's, that's amazing. That is, that is amazing. Um, and, uh, of course, you've had a number of celebrated collaborations um, with many different people. Um, Anything that you would highlight as being an amazingly special experience, uh, you know, a, a movie, an actor, a singer, one of the you know, other amazing folks like Mick Jagger that you have collaborated with, what, what, what stands out for you? I've been very, very lucky. <laughs> I'm very content because I got, um, first of all, one of my dream directors worked with me for the first film, Roja, Mani Ratnam. Then I worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber, I worked with Shekhar Kapoor, all of them whom I've admired. Then um, I worked with Nusrat for Ali Khan Sahib. Of course. And just before he passed away, and I worked with uh, yeah, Danny Boyle, who was again very sympathetic towards music. And I just met Terence Malik recently. <laughs> we just met, who was based in Austin. He came for the, he, didn't, he couldn't come for the show, but he heard some of my music. And the one I want to work with, maybe Stevie Wonder. <laughs> of course. Stevie. Michael easy. Jackson, I met him twice, but unfortunately we couldn't work together. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So I think we are going to now uh, uh, take uh, questions that have been submitted on the G Plus page and on YouTube. So it'll be a mixture of uh, uh, questions that we're going to play on the, you know, on the monitor mm -hmm. and things that I'm going to read off that uh, uh, you know, that were submitted to us via G+. Um, so the first question, which is, um, which is going to be on YouTube, um, it's uh, from, of all places, Australia. That's amazing. Um, from Australian fans Fred Taylor and Daniel Lee. And uh, could we roll uh, video number one, please? Hi, Aya. My name is Fred. My name is Daniel. We're from Australia, and we're big fans of your work. Um, we've both got some questions today. My question is, can you tell us more about the latest technology that you use when composing music? And on that note, um, I just want to know how you feel about the use of auto-tune in popular music. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, my philosophy about using technology is you have to master them. It needs to work for you, and you shouldn't work for that. And uh, so when I come to a stage, if I'm using a software, um, I wait till I master it, and my thoughts go straight into that rather than checking the manual, oh, how do you save this? <laughs> how do you edit? And it has to, so even if it, ha it takes two years, it'll be in another room, I'll be jamming with it, and one day I'll say, okay, guys, change it. Bring it to the main, main room. So that's been going on. I used to work with hardware sequences before, 
And uh, to switch to Logic, which is what I'm using, Logic Pro, uh, it took two years. I watched a German programmer who worked with me, Yak Bondi in Vande Matram, Mataji Salam. He was using it, and a couple of Australians were using it. And it took me probably 20, 97 or 98 is when I switched to Total Software. And um, so I'm using Logic Pro to answer your question. And then uh, we use Pro Tools for mixing. And then we use a bit of Melodyne to add harmonies and everything. We use Autotune sometimes. <laughs> Intentionally, just to give an effect. And because we have amazing singers, we don't need Autotune. That's cool. I think that points to, you know, we all see the inspiring work that comes out. But uh, clearly, you're saying just to change one instrument or one aspect of your music, you literally go through years of training and practice. Uh, I think there's, <laughs> there's a lot to be learned there. Um, the second question is, um, is from G+, it's from Google+, and uh, it's from uh, user Balaji. And his question is, uh, what is your advice and motivation for young people who want to pursue a career in music? With what amount of knowledge and content does one break through? I feel whatever, first of all, you need to have a year for music. Yeah. You need to love uh, beautiful stuff. Then it becomes part of you. Right. It's even whether in spirituality or music, it's the same thing. The more you start getting into something, and then you, it becomes you. And um, so if you're half-heartedly doing something and you don't give enough time, it's not worth it. If you and you don't even think about sustenance, nothing, and then just go into it and become a master of it, people will come following you. And that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, next up, we have a video question from uh, Kevin Jenkinson from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, let's roll video number two, please. Hi, AR. Kevin Jenkinson here, journalist in Dublin, Ireland. With the success of Slumdog Millionaire and the super heavy bands that you formed with Mick Jagger and whether you've become a global icon, what is the one wish you have for the world and how do you think your fans contribute to that one wish globally? What is this? What is this? So he's saying, what is the one wish you have oh, for yeah, the world for the and how do you think your fans can contribute to that one wish globally? Um, There is a lot of, um, um, I would say, impatience with many things, you know. Sometimes, even on the table, if uh, your food comes late, you start questioning and say, I have the right, why did you bring it late, and starting a trouble. But you can also be patient, you can be calm in a Zen mode, so that you don't spoil the, you know, the aura of the place. Yeah. And that comes even in a major level, in, in the street, in a, in a, in a state, in a country, in the world, even on the net. You see YouTube. You just put anything and you have dirty comments down about the race, about sex, about everything. And uh, it's so unfortunate. And then nobody wants to see the real video. They want to see what the comments are. <laughs> They're so dirty. <laughs> so I'm going to probably five years another album, comments will be off. Just listen to the music and internalize it, and then speak to yourself. And, and to deal with many major situations, I think this is it. I think we're all judgmental. We are. Um, for me, I think I'm judging myself constantly, so I don't have time for judging also. <laughs> and um, that's the basic thing. I think today, if we are more patient and we're more open and not non-judgmental, I think the world will be a better place. I love that. Yeah. More patience, more tolerance. That's wonderful. Um, the next uh, question is from Ashutosh Gupta. And he asks, name the one album by any artist that has influenced and inspired you and your music the most. There's not one, there's many, actually. Um, Peter Gabriel. John Williams and um, Vangelis, Madeline Srinivas. Then in South India, you know, we have uh, Vishwanathan Ramurthy, KV Mahadevan, Ali Raja Saab. And uh, North India, Naushad, Adi Berman, Madan Mohan. So 
if you look at the beauty in everything, you, as I told you before, it, it, it affects you in a good way and beauty starts coming out of you. And that's, even music, it's very important. Rather than shutting off and thinking that, um, and then you can go further from there where they left. That's that that's that's great, and uh, you know personally, I think the the loss of Yusuf Nivas is one of the most tragic things that's happened to music in in many many years at such a young age. So. Um, we have another YouTube question. This is from uh, Google intern Shaili Samar, and uh, she wants to know what shaped your path when you were younger. So let's roll the video, please. Hi, my name is Shali and I'm 19 years old. I'm one of the very excited interns in this audience. When you were 19 years old, what sorts of ideas, thoughts, and dreams did you have in your head and heart? And how have those shaped you to become who you are today? When I was 19, I was working, I guess. Um, I was really confused. Uh, I didn't know whether anybody would give a girl to me to get married because <laughs> I left school, I left high school, <laughs> I was playing the studios and there's constant gossip in the studio that that's it, the music and all this film industry will end very soon, we'll go jobless. <laughs> that's right. What it's, kept you going? Uh, there's no other job I knew. So <laughs> <laughs> And uh, when did you really begin to feel like uh, what you were doing was a profession, that something that you could you know, keep doing for a long time? Um, after the first movie, after Roja, I think the whole overwhelming love and, and uh, when I realized I have to learn a lot <laughs> is when, you know, the motivation to, and I was getting paid for learning. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's what the best jobs have, which is what I, I tell my children, for example. It's not a job if you love it. Yeah. And the fact that you get paid for it just becomes like this big bonus on the, um, bonus on the site. Um, next question is from uh, Srikant Marti. This is uh, from G+. Um, how do you choose your movies? Based on the director or the script? And uh, she also says, um, since Slumdog, your Indian film scores have had a distinct international flavor to them. Was this a conscious effort? And uh, will you do a pure Indian album taking us back to our early days? How many questions? Lots of questions, four <laughs> questions. Let's start with the simple one. How do you choose your movies? Is it the director, uh, is it the script? I choose with an intention of a team. Yeah. Because if they have good intention and they've done something beautiful before, I know that at least they're gonna try doing something good. Yeah. And most of the times it's good. <laughs> Sometimes it goes in the wrong path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then? And then the other ones were, uh, after you did Slumdog Millionaire, your music yeah. has a very international feel. Is this uh, conscious? Do you want to you know, go back? Uh, mm, I think the expectations were like, if you take iTunes or anything, anybody can access that music. That's right. It doesn't have to be you know, Tamil people or Telugu people or Hindi people, if they want to listen to my music. So it had to have a consistency in it. And maybe because of that. Um, and uh, you, you know, of course, you also have uh, a lot of fans on YouTube. How do you think about YouTube as a medium? I was checking your channel um, last night. You have, uh, if I remember correctly, something like 150,000 uh, mm -hmm. subscribers to uh, your channel. I think what YouTube, do you think of the YouTube medium? is a blessing. Um, because there was a bottleneck before. If anybody was talented, they had to go through sources and they, oh, can you put me on this thing? Can you put me on the cover? Nobody cares anymore. Even they're good or bad, now they put it, put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered this dancer who's with, the, with us called Devi Rani. She's from Croatia. And, um, so I saw, suddenly stumbled upon her and then I said, oh, this, um, she's good. I know I was doing a music video for my sisters and I asked my assistant Vivian to call her and she said, hey, Rahman, I'm Manuel Monroe. She never believed that. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, I discovered on YouTube, I discovered Janita, who's singing with, with us now on this thing on YouTube. Many people, actually. That's wonderful. So you, you really, really are seeing a lot of people, amazing people, express yeah. themselves through YouTube and get discovered in ways that's not really happened before. They don't have to care about anybody. They can just do it. 
Yes, too much. It opens your mind and gives a sense of. Um, and would you consider, uh, for example, you know, broadcasting your, your your jam sessions just for people to get insight into how you think and work? Um, <clears throat> just that when you expose yourself too much, they don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that, I hear that. Um, the next question is from uh, Halima Zaman from uh, Bangladesh. And uh, she says, uh, sometimes a person is blessed. Lots of potential, but doesn't have support from their family. What advice would you have for them to follow and fulfill their dream? Was your family supportive, by the way, when you wanted I, to yeah. do music? I, it was opposite. My mother wanted me to do music, and I didn't want to do music. Oh. <laughs> What advice would you have for her? Um, I think she's a believer, she prays. God will send somebody to her. <laughs> That's what I, f I feel that, you know, there's always support, bigger support. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. This is a good one. Um, this is from uh, Prasanna Ramachandran on G+. And he says, what's the one thing about Air Rahman that nobody knows yet? <laughs> <laughs> this might go back to your too much exposure point. <laughs> uh, I think mostly everybody knows everything about it. <laughs> Maybe my wife. Your life's an open book. <laughs> Sorry? My wife should say something. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a question from YouTube now. This is from uh, Somas Tyagaraja. And uh, he wants to know more about the creation process. I think that's the thing that we are all fascinated by. How does this amazing process of creating such beautiful music happen? Let's uh, roll the video, please. This is on question number 10. Uh, my question for you today is, you know, I've always been curious how you come up with these amazing songs one after the other for the last 25 years. And I'm curious to hear, you know, right from the, the inception of the track and the basic tune that you have, how do you develop that into the final song that we all get to hear? It would be great if you can share you know, your experiences from like a couple of memorable tracks of how it came about and how you ended up with that final magic that we all get to hear. I'm sure millions of people in the world would love to hear that as well. Thank you so much. Um, you no, know, like an artist who reflects whatever's inside on a painting, music is also like that. If I, if I am in a Zen mode, environment peaceful, and then the music which comes out um, mirrors it. And so do you have to get angry to? No, <laughs> I just need to put a beat and start playing on it. <laughs> Mostly, I don't do the stuff like that in dark. I don't know why. <laughs> um, the world is anyway dark. So, um, so then what I do is I do a lot of ideas, and probably two sessions or three sessions, have 20 ideas. If it's very, very important, I have a lot of ideas, and then listen to it back. And compare it to my work, and compare it to greater works, which you've heard before, where does it stand? So what does it take to make it beautiful? So if it's very simple as a tune, then the arrangement actually complements it in a different way. And, um, and then if you have both together, then you get a beautiful lyric. Yeah, yeah. And so there are many, many stages where you can achieve. Still, it's not good to throw it off and do something else. How often do you end up uh, you know, discarding melodies and songs which you have created? Five percent. Sometimes we do a song and um, we say, no, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, if you're trying too hard, I don't think it's worth it. Right. And it has to come fresh. It has to be. Right, right. Um, what do you see in the future for you, next five years? What, what, what are things that you would like to um, get done? There are many things, actually. After starting the school, the college, we have amazing talents. We have probably Tell us a little bit about this college. I don't think we know. Uh, the college started in 2008. Yeah. It has a conservatory. And, uh, this is in Chennai? In Chennai. Uh, the idea was to give the best training in Western classical and Hindustani. Um, so we have, we've been doing it five years. We, um, we opened a campus now, two years back. Mokesh Ambani ji came and opened it up. And the main motive is to give the kids who want to learn music. Um, 
something unique which India doesn't give. And to get underprivileged kids to, um, to make them trained in Western classical. Because we, for studio musicians, for studio work, we don't have string players or brass players or anything. The previous generation is there, but younger generation don't want to learn that. So probably in a few years, we'll have an orchestra. And so this is, uh, this is like... In fact, we have one on YouTube. It's called the Sunshine Orchestra. You can check it out. Oh, OK. You should. Uh, it's so um, based on that thing. Um, and these students go through a structured curriculum? Um, is, so is it, yes. So this is not the traditional, like the Guru Sishya Parampara? No, no, no. OK. And we have teachers from Armenia, uh, Scotland, the US, UK, all over the place. Wow. In the chain. And uh, how, how, how big is this? How many students uh, are part um, of this? Group? I think we have around 200, 300 students. And the campus is around 40,000 square feet. And OK, it's a big campus. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Um, and uh, so the question is, um, because we have this access to all these beautiful things, Yeah. Um, my, as you said, my path would be to write more things of probably set up uh, musicals, you know, coming from the, from the product of KM Conservatory. And so India, people in India could watch something unique. Coming from our culture, yet having the sensibilities of what a Westerner would like. And uh, how do you see Indian music Evolving, of course, you're in um, you know you're in Chennai, which is also the heart of things like uh, Carnatic music, which continues to be a very very vibrant uh, you know art form. Um, how do you see Indian music itself evolving over the again over the next several years? Things are opening up. I think um, you can see a lot of innovative things being starting to come now. I think when that goes goes to the next stage, I think I feel there'll be something in it. Right now, it's still in a shell. I feel That's classical right. music still, it has to be protected. But some people can be more liberal and then can go and do some wilder things without spoiling the sanctity of it, I feel. I think you've done an amazing job of being innovative, of pushing boundaries, of blending things in a way that all of us have felt kind of you know, reflects who we are as people. I think that's, that's part of what is amazing about, you. uh, about your music. Um, I get bored soon. What's that? I get bored of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we are happy because your music keeps changing. It keeps engaging us. So I think that is, um, that is wonderful. Um, so this is actually a great segue to the last part of the show. I am told uh, that uh, you know, you're going to do a little performance for us. Woo! Um, yeah, if you want to hear us all sing, you should come to the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. It's, uh, last night was wild, actually. Very nice people. Lot, lot, lots of audience participation. Yeah, beautiful. So we look forward to that. What's this? Now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please give him a big, big uh, round of applause again. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. 